If you haven't watched any of the other Koki TTS or VITS training videos, you shouldn't need to. I'm going to try to summarize everything here as I step through the revised Google Colab script. What we're going to be going through here should be enough to get you started if you're looking to try experimenting with fine-tuning an English language VITS model using the Koki TTS framework. Using some free and open source tools to edit audio, I'm going to show a method for quickly creating samples for a dataset, using a Windows port of Ziff's RNN noise to clean up poor audio quality, and then using OpenAI's Whisper speech to text to generate transcriptions. Then I'll cover the rest of the Google Colab script, including the changes to the sample processing, training modes, and training options. Finally, I'll go over resuming an interrupted training session, starting a new session, and starting a session from a previous checkpoint. For editing, I'm going to be using Audacity, which is a free open source editor available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and probably Tempo OS. You can find it at, at audacityteam.org, that's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, team.org. In terms of Windows builds, Windows 7 is discontinued, but if you scroll down to the long page of mirrors, you can find a download link to the last supported build. Audacity comes with a few pre-installed plugins, and there are more that can be downloaded through their site. Click the download link on the Audacity Team front page, and then hit plugins to browse around and see what's up there. It's not going to be used in this video, but if you're doing any music work, MuseFX is a good little package of basic effects like reverb and chorus. You can get MuseFX by going to musehub.com and downloading the MuseHub application, and then installing each effect individually from the effects tab in the application. Another plugin that isn't used here directly, but will be handy if you want to get an audio track from a video file without using the command line, is FFmpeg for Audacity. I'll put the link to the FFmpeg plugin in the video description down below. The one plugin we are going to be using in this video is the Real-Time Noise Suppression plugin, which is based on Ziff's RNN Noise, which is the same one that's used in the Google Colab script later. You can download it from the author's GitHub page, which I'll link down below. There are a couple of caveats with the plugin, but they're the same as the original library. Firstly, it may not perform as desired, and could actually make your voice recordings worse. But in this case, probably not, because you're going to be sitting there dialing in the settings and presumably have ears. The other issue is that it works only on 48k audio, but we can resample everything in Audacity. After downloading the RNN Noise plugin zip file, extract the folders and copy the rnnnoise.vst3 folder to the program files slash common files slash vst3 directory on your PC. Load up Audacity and it will scan for plugins. You can see which plugins are found and enabled or disabled by using the plugin manager under the analyze or effects tabs. The newly installed RNN News plugin should appear toward the bottom of the effects tab. Here's the audio track that I'll use as an example in this video. It's Twilight Zone creator Rod Serling giving a fantastic talk on being a writer. They come from every human experience that you either witness or have heard about, translated into your brain in your own sense of dialogue in your own language form. Uh, ideas are born uh, from what is smelled, heard, seen, experienced, felt, emotionalized. Ideas are probably uh, in the air, like, like little tiny items of ozone. Uh, that's the easiest thing on earth, is to come up with an idea. The levels of this recording are all over the place. Rod Serling seems to be moving around a stationary microphone at times, which makes even recording difficult. It's noisy, but not too bad. There's a little bit of warble to it, but you can clearly hear each syllable spoken. As mentioned earlier, the RNN Noise plugin handles 48k audio, so what we have needs to be upsampled if it wasn't already. Hit Control A to select all the audio tracks, and then click the Tracks menu. Select Resample and type 48,000, hit OK, and then wait a few seconds. Now go over to the Effects tab, and depending on what you have installed on your system, the plugin should appear toward the bottom of the list. Launch the Noise Suppression for Voice VST3 plugin, and hit Preview to switch it on and listen to how it sounds. Translated into your brain in your own sense of dialogue in your own language form. Uh, ideas are born uh, from what is smelled, heard, seen, experienced, felt, emotionalized. Ideas are probably uh, in the air. Like, like the Review the function descriptions in the plugin documentation found on the author's GitHub page, but really, when it comes down to it with this one, you're just going to need to sit there and dial in things for each audio track. The plugin samples audio and tries to figure out what is voice and what isn't. If there's less than VAD threshold percent chance of the audio being a voice, it's tossed out. The great percent adjustments allow for small segments of silence after probable voice segments, so words and syllables aren't as abruptly cut off. The world and everything in it, hunger, poverty, the anguish of the human race, 
the desperate sense of self-destruction that we entertain all the time, the deep, pervading gloom that comes with our inability to cope. Of course you're going to over-concern yourself with issues. It's right that you should do so. If you find spectrograms helpful in the information pane on the left-hand side, press the black down arrow and then hit multi-view. That'll give you a split-screen waveform and spectrogram view. Audacity's replaced the old Silence Finder plugin with the new Label Sounds tool under the Analyze menu. You'll have to use settings that are appropriate for your recording environment and quality, but a good starting threshold seems to be about minus 46 dB. Try to figure out what the average duration is between sentences in your file. In my case here, it was about 0.3 or 0.4 seconds, and I'll use something like that in the range. The minimum label interval will end up being the shortest allowed clip. I'll set it to be 1.5 seconds. And to eliminate hard clipping, I'm going to allow a small amount, 0.5 seconds, of silence at the beginning and end of each clip. This will probably take you a little bit of trial and error, but once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. If you look at some of the pages of the stuff I've written, and even some of the good things, shut your eyes, you won't know who's talking, because they all talk alike. Save all the labeled portions to files by selecting the Export Multiple Files from the File Export submenu. Set the path name, and then select Numbering After File Name Prefix. Set a short prefix and make sure you're saving it as 16-bit signed PCM WAV files. After hitting Export and waiting a couple minutes, your file should be denoised and split. Filter out any short files, files of nonsense, and trim any long files by hand if you're not going to do further processing in the notebook. I'm going to go over the notebook fairly quickly here because most of it is just click and wait. Save a copy to your own Google Drive account because there could be some changes in this one. Use the first cell to connect your Google Drive account after accepting the pop-up window. In the next section, set a dataset name. This directory will be created on your Google Drive if it doesn't already exist. The trainer output directory is where the trained models, config files, and logs are stored. The only cell that you may want to change here is the run name, with a short description of the training run. After setting the values, run the cell. Continue is for resuming an interrupted training session. This will automatically select the best loss checkpoint in the training directory. Restore will begin a new fine-tuning session and create a new run directory. Restore Checkpoint will begin a new fine-tuning session based on a previously fine-tuned checkpoint in a new run directory. Use the next cells to install ZIF's RNN noise, Goki TTS, and the Whisper Speech to Text framework. The script's been updated to have some extra audio processing options. You can choose to use RNN noise or not, run the filters, or normalize the audio or not. Consider this experimental as best and things are best left enabled. However, you may want to disable RNN noise if you've already processed your audio clips. After setting the options here, or leaving them all at the default setting of true, run the cell. Run the next cell to run the audio preprocessing on all of the clips in your sample upload directory set above. If you need to adjust the trigger for the split on silence, it's set to 0.2 seconds right now. Click show code and scroll down to the socks line and then change the intervals. Similarly, if you need to adjust the 8 second forced split, you can adjust it under the other socks line there. The next cell will download the VITS model and generate a sample audio file. Use the next two cells to load TensorBoard to look at training graphs and listen to audio samples generated during the training session. Run these before doing any training and then hit the refresh button in the TensorBoard dashboard to get the latest generated logs. If your Colab session disconnects, TensorBoard also disconnects from Colab. So even if your Colab session keeps running, the TensorBoard dash that loads up won't be able to fetch updated logs until you restart the entire Colab session. When you get toward the bottom of the script, there's a section to fetch the training run name if you're continuing a session or restoring from a previous checkpoint. Use the cell to list all the run folders in your dataset directory. And then copy and paste the run name into the next cell and run it. Run the next cell to list all the checkpoints in the run directory, and then set the checkpoint in the next cell if you're restoring from it. The last big changes are the training run options. You can now toggle a handful of things on and off. To reinitialize the text encoder, set reinit te status to true. To reinitialize the duration predictor, set reinit dp status to true. 
Don't do this unless you need to, because it destroys prior training on those areas. If either of the reinitialized options are set to true, they'll reinitialize even when you're continuing or restoring a training run. Meaning that if you frequently restart your sessions, you'll never actually be training that the text encoder or duration predictor. Freeze waveform decoder, load decoder, freeze encoder, and freeze duration predict will allow you to toggle these areas as frozen or not during the training session. You should have all these set to false by default. You may get good results by reinitializing the text encoder at the beginning of training, training until you get well-structured words, and then stopping. Continue the training session by setting the reinitialize encoder flag to false, and then setting freeze encoder to true, and then continue training until the overall audio quality improves. If you change any training options, you'll need to run the cell to reinitialize the trainer again. That just means click play on the init the trainer cell again to reload it with the changed options. Run the final cell to start the trainer. The model runs and associated files are stored in your dataset directory in the trainer output folder. If you want to preserve your model for the future, just download the config.json file and the checkpoint.pth file from your training run folder. Each checkpoint is about 900 megabytes, so they will pile up quickly. Thanks for watching. If you find these kinds of videos helpful, hit like and leave a comment if you have any questions. If you'd like to help a channel grow, please help share the videos online and subscribe. Uh, and know the topics don't interest everyone, so don't tell Susan, but I said it's okay if you turn off notifications. Just don't let me out. Thanks for watching, and always remember, stay human.